Hey friends, welcome back. We are on episode four of our DIY bathroom build project. I will link a playlist here if you wanna catch up on all of the previous episodes so far, but basically we are making our dream bathroom from scratch, watching YouTube videos and Googling how to do it as we go. Today we are starting to do some of the fun stuff and the pretty things you will actually see in the final bathroom, starting with this wall paneling. I have been obsessed with the look of vertical shiplap or beadboard. It's been all over my Pinterest page, so I knew I wanted to incorporate this kind of wall treatment somewhere in the bathroom and since the bathroom is so small and there's not many like little niches or nooks it only made sense to me at least to do it through the entire room so Christian of course is gonna make that happen we found this product we really really loved from Home Depot we found it in store in stock it's a super great quality beadboard PVC tongue and groove paneling combination it comes in a pack of three you buy as many packs as you need for the room obviously Christian's gonna cut around all of our electrical boxes and the plumbing and then adhere it to the wall with some liquid nails and then some brad nails it's a tongue and groove so it kind of clicks into place you can like take a mallet and knock it in really securely and it looks so good and so clean and all of the reviews online said it looks even better once you paint it we're not painting it in this episode we're just getting it on the walls but i'm already so excited and seeing the vision of this room really come to life We also decided to put the wall sconces up. These are gonna be on either side of our vanity mirror above the sink. We'll be taking them down to be painting this beadboard, but we were just excited to see them in the space and to have some extra lighting around while we're doing these projects after bedtime. We haven't quite figured out how we're going to end the beadboard and start the shower tiles, so we're not going to take the paneling all the way to where the waterproofing is. You'll see a little gap there, but uh, we'll figure that out at some point in the future. That's a future Christian and Allison problem. Actually, probably just a future Christian problem. We had to do a little bit of experimenting to find the best way to fill all of the nail holes. First, we just tried using the paintable caulk we would be using around the ceiling line. And uh, Christian didn't love the finish. It worked, but it wasn't the best. So he looked online and saw, I think in the reviews for this product, that people recommended using a joint compound because it just stands super smoothly and easily. So Christian pulled that out because he was working on the ceiling anyway and filled in all of those spots. And we found that to be the best method. And with the joint compound out, he went and did another layer of sanding, mudding, all of that stuff to the ceiling to just make it a little bit smoother and get it ready to be painted. While we were waiting for the drywall on the ceiling to dry so we can sand it and repeat that process again, Christian went ahead and did some caulking. He did around the bathtub, all of the bath fixtures there, and then around the entire ceiling where our beadboard would meet the ceiling, just so it's a super clean finish. I will say I was kind of nervous when the beadboard was first installed that it looked kind of cheap or just shiny. The shininess will be fixed by paint, but I will say the caulk made the rest of it look just absolutely perfect and super high end. So don't fret if you're doing this project and you're nervous it's not looking great always wait until you do the finishing touches jumping in for a little interruption christian has wrapped up all of the sanding and uh, patching of nail holes and stuff he's done i think three coats of joint compound and taping and sanding on the ceiling we could do a couple more but we're ready to move on we're happy with where the ceiling looks right now so i'm stepping in to do some painting of primer and then our actual paint color on the ceiling he also went and filled in all of our nail holes you can just barely see them and we're hoping they fully disappear once we paint this wall but otherwise we feel good about the progress and we're ready to actually start painting things so starting with the ceiling I'm 
I'm starting with one coat of Kills Primer, and then I'm gonna go in with the color Whipped Cream by Bare Paint. I just bought the highest quality paint that Home Depot sells. I love Home Depot paint. I have nothing against it or feel the need to go any higher quality than that. We did a satin finish because it is a bathroom, and then the color Whipped Cream is supposed to be like a dupe, they say, for Chantilly Lace. It's just a very pretty bright white color without being too blue or too yellow. We're really happy with the ceiling color. We don't know the color of the ceilings in the rest of the house, but I do think this will just be our go-to color moving forward since we're going to have to do some ceiling patchwork around the home. I think this will just be like the basic color we go with for every other room here. The can light Christian had previously installed actually changes like temperature. So he was asking me which temperature I wanted to go with. We didn't go with just daylight. We went like a half step above that. I don't know the exact Kelvin, but it's a little bit warmer than just a bright white, but still leaning towards that side. He also put all the fixtures back on the ceiling. So that looks great up there. We actually have one wall in this room completely done. The ceiling is taken care of. We also decided to switch out our light switch for a dimmable switch, just so we have the option to make this room kind of a night light, especially with little ones hopefully potty training soon and then it's time to move on to the fun stuff the floor tile yes we are laying tile in this video i am so excited uh we started off with just a basic tile cutter and ended up chipping this like mosaic herringbone tile we're putting on the floor pretty badly so christian ended up going to rent a wet saw and it was the best decision we could have made for this room for this specific tile up against the bathtub the cuts are going to be so clean you will see them in a little bit once we actually lay it down but the wet saw was definitely worth the rental um we we were late on our rental so we had it for a little over a day and it was only about a hundred dollars so a great deal for a tool like that that definitely makes it look professional and super clean Christian also purchased an angle grinder for some of the trickier cuts like here around the toilet flange. Thankfully, this room is just a rectangle, so he only has straight cuts to make except for around this toilet flange. Makes it super simple and easy to do this project, and uh, we still had some problems along the way you'll see in a little bit, but it started off very straightforward for tile newbies like us. Christian set up a laser level to keep the tile going in a straight line and then got to work laying down thin set and then tile on top of it. This is our first attempt at tile, so obviously it comes with a steep learning curve, and the first thing we discovered is that you don't want to use too much thin set. Especially with a mosaic like this, too much thin set means that a lot of it's going to seep through the grout lines, or like the spaces in between each tile, and uh, you can't grout if there's thin set there. So I stepped into the tub and started taking a wet sponge, and honestly just like a kitchen knife and whatever we could find to start scraping out all of the thin set. A quick Google search told us it was a lot easier to do this part while it was still wet then waiting for it to dry and trying to carve it out while it's all solid so i was trying to clean up as much as possible but you can still kind of see the dark spots between the tiles it all worked out and it's all okay now but it was a little bit stressful in the moment to realize how much thin set had seeped through all the tiles and uh, how many grout lines there were to clean up Now, if I was orchestrating this video perfectly just for YouTube and not for like real life how building projects work, I would have had us grout the floor tile next, but instead we decided to keep the tile train moving on and skip the grout for now. We'll come back and do that in another update and just start working on the shower. The shower tile was much easier to work with. Thankfully, it was large skill tiles, which obviously is a lot simpler to do than the large mosaics that I had picked out for our floor tile. And also the learning curve, all of the things that we had picked up from learning the process of putting 
putting the tile on the floor made the shower a lot simpler. So we're not doing the entire shower in this video, we are just doing this back wall. We're using 1 16th spacers and Christian saw in a YouTube video once that if you put these little cross spacers in between your tiles and push them far enough back, you don't have to worry about pulling them out. Normally the spacers, you can see like the horseshoe ones sticking out in the bottom corner of the video, the red uh, horseshoe looking ones, obviously the name horseshoe. Those you pull out once this thin set is dry, but these little cross ones we're gonna leave behind uh, because the grout will just cover them. But we used these spacers to go along. We used the laser level. We also did a dry lay of the tiles. So the night before we had actually laid all of these tiles down on our living room carpet and rearranged all of the different color variations to make it look nice and balanced and thoughtful. And then we organized them into these neat little piles and then Christian got to work tiling the next day. We also used that handy dandy tile cutter that was not helpful for the floor tile. It was great for this kind of tile. So Christian was able to just cut as he went. So all of the tiles were super easy to lay on this. I didn't do very much this process as is the usual for this bathroom process. I'm normally wrangling toddlers during this but I did step in here and there with a wet sponge to clean up any thin set, but unlike the floors, there wasn't much to clean up here. This was a super straightforward part of the project. You may notice a slight sloping to our ceiling. The tiles got smaller and smaller along the left side of the wall, so uh, just ignore that. We're hoping you don't really have your eye drawn to it. It's just what happens with homes. They're not built perfectly square and level, and especially when you're doing drywall for the first time and building for the first time, you're gonna make mistakes. So that's definitely one little imperfection is the ceiling sloping. Um, there's lots of other little things coming up in future videos that I will share then, so make sure you guys are sticking around for all of those. wrap up this video we made a lot of progress floors are in with thin set there's still grout to be laid down same with this back wall of the shower it won't be this dark in between all the tiles we'll be putting in a white grout we also have to tile the two sides but ceiling is complete we have a lot of the tile in most of our fixtures like the furniture and the final touches are in like the mirror the vanity the toilet we are so close to finishing so stay tuned for next week i think Maybe we'll be done next week. Maybe we have two more updates. Stay tuned to find out. Subscribe and like this video if you're enjoying this series and I will see you guys next week. Bye.